We now return to Inside Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> the Unforgivable Curse. Only once has someone survived Avada Kedavra and bears a lightning bolt scar for his trouble. Voldemort, his would-be assassin, was reduced to a thing barely alive. Thirteen years have passed. His followers have stood by long enough. And now the unthinkable happens. The storm that is coming is that Voldemort has returned. His devout followers, called Death Eaters, herald his return. The people who are bad, they're irredeemably bad. They're not very nice. And when they pretend to be nice, it's because they're pretending. Because underneath it, they, they're the followers of the Dark Lord, who is the most evil creature on Earth. The Dark Mark calls them back to the fold. Chief among his followers is Lucius Malfoy, the father of Harry's longtime enemy, Draco. He's been praying for Voldemort's return for a very long time. This is my paradise scenario. I don't normally get to go out like this during the day. When you put this stuff on, and you put these beautiful, long, stately robes on and fern, particularly when I grab that cane with the snake head at the top, I just suddenly become incredibly unpleasant. Peter Pettigrew, called Wormtail, betrayed Harry's parents 13 years back, and now is Voldemort's key attendant. Pettigrew has found himself being the Batman, cook, chef, valet, uh, bottle feeder, he nurtures Lord Voldemort, Jimmy keeps his blanket warm. Wormtail is a study in despicable behavior. Because of the whole look, the suit and the hair, when I had the teeth, I just started to feel that the character's natural uh, stunts would be kind of rat-like, you know, or ready to be in some way sort of creepily subservient. But for Harry, the real nightmare is Voldemort. Enemies doesn't quite do it justice, because at the same time as hating him with every fiber of his being, Harry is also absolutely terrified of him. The Dark Lord shall rise again. Ever since the beginning, I've thought of Ray Fiennes as Voldemort. Is it Voldemort? He's really quite terrifying. It's gonna really freak people out. I'm really looking forward to that. Mike was very keen to explore the unexpected mood swings of Voldemort. So there are moments when sort of anger spits out at him at Harry, and other moments when it can be very silky and smooth and almost, almost pleasant. The way he used his body, like the, he does all this stuff when he's being reborn with his hands, and it's just, it's fantastic. He's new in this body, it's new to him, so he's testing it. So when he, he's, we first see him touching, feeling his head, feeling his face, his eyes pop open. Everything's going to change now, isn't it? Ow! You stood on my foot! Daniel, Emma, and Rupert have grown up on film. They've worked with some of the finest actors in the world and become better actors for it. They faced legions of adoring fans and yet held on to their humility all as sweet and you know even sweeter possibly than, if it's possible than they were on the first film they are good people each and every one of them i have made very good friends with them but i would like some female company occasionally emma has matured grown more comfortable in herself become more confident she's more outgoing and really caring for those around her we got on really well and um they've made it so fun Dan and Emma. And Rupert, funny, witty, droll. He has the humor of someone 20 years older than he is. Rupert is absolutely hysterical. He is so funny. Um, and Emma is amazingly clever. Dan is completely unaffected by his fame, by all the attention, is able to do these really significant exams, study for them and take on this most physical of all the films, this most challenging of all the films. It's wonderful, really. It's very good to see them change like that. I'm terribly impressed with them. I continue to be impressed with them. Daniel and Rupert and Emma are three movies better and more skilled. You can really see the leaps they've taken as actors and as technicians just being comfortable around a film set. Now, an exclusive peek at the new movie. Give us a curse. Well... My, my dad did tell me about one. 
The Imperious Curse? Oh, yeah. Your father would know all about that. Gave the Ministry quite a bit of grief a few years ago. Perhaps this will show you why. Hello. Ugly little beauty. Ngozio. Imperio! <laughs> Don't worry, completely harmless. <laughs> <laughs> and she bites. She's lethal. <laughs> Harry and his friends are growing up. The stakes are higher now, but they rise to the challenge. They always do. With the Goblet of Fire opening in IMAX theaters and on screens all around the globe, audiences everywhere can thrill in Harry's greatest adventure yet. I love 